Today I'm going to talk about real-time control in water systems and what it means to me. This is part of the Hydroinformatics module for the MSc in Water Management run by Exeter University. My name's Helena Machen and I work as an Operations Coordinator. I run several different water treatment works where I'm responsible for drinking water safety, asset management investment schemes, health and safety and audits. However, my primary goal is to provide safe, wholesome drinking water 24-7, 365 days of the year. In order to provide this level of service and meet strict DWI regulations, we need constant monitoring of our processes, including inlet and outlet flows to meet demand, pH, turbidity and chlorine monitoring, service reservoir levels and network pressures, as drops in pressure could indicate bursts or leaks in the network. So how can we use all this data for real-time control? Yeah, sure. Um, real-time control, uh, we tend to use closed loop systems where possible, especially on uh, chemical dosing, um, flow control, pressure control. There are some loops which are open loop control, which means a lot of intervention from an operator, but uh, typically uh, closed loop control system looks like. Here we have a diagram of a closed loop chlorine control system for a water treatment works contact tank. The operator inputs a set point within the SCADA control system, which is sent to the programmable logic controller. So these are the actual controllers that control our operators. They take basic signals such as the flow through the plant, the chlorine signal which we measure at the time of that, and then they, they um, look at that information and provide an output for our operators. Chlorine monitors then collect a sample from the contact tank outlet and sends a process variable to the logic controller. The controller needs to be computationally efficient to handle highly complex control algorithms. Here, the controller compares the process variable and set point to decide a suitable output to send to the chlorinators. This in turn alters or maintains the amount of chlorine added to the inlet of the contact tank. This represents a closed loop system, which provides accurate, reliable control with reduced effects of parameter variation with no manual intervention required. Back of the net. We then need to get that water out to distribution. And we control this on a numerous amount of set points. So we have the water in the, our final water tank. So here we have a pump running, which can be shown um, by this green line here. The flow meter downstream of the pumps show when the pump is running. When the reservoir fills to a set point, the pumps automatically switch on. This is to fill the reservoir downstream. When the reservoir drains down to a set point, the pumps switch off. This is to provide reservoir turnover and to prevent bacteriological failures. However, water companies aren't very good at this process, as they like to keep their tanks full for operational issues. So the reason I chose to do this MSc is because I'm passionate about the training and upskilling of frontline operations to promote new technologies and optimization of systems to enhance resilience of water supplies for the future. Thanks for listening.